Hello and welcome everyone. In this video, we will see how we can make this LED game in LabVIEW using some state machine functions. So, first of all, I will just run my game and let's see how it works. So, if I press on instructions, it will open some dialog box that will show me the instructions how to play the game and what uh, and how you can play this game. And then, if we run the start button, we have to press an LED. Uh, if we click on the right LED then our score will increase and similarly if we pass through some specific score then our level increases. Now if I don't press or if I press the wrong LED my score will be shown and the game will be over. So let's see how we can make and implement in straight machine. So first of all it will begin with some initialization then it will go to event structure which means the event case structure and within the case structure there will be some events and those events will be the start event, instructions event, LEDs, four LEDs events and the stop event. So it means when we have three buttons uh, which means if we press start button, instructions button or stop button and besides those buttons we have four LEDs which means we have four event structure for separate LEDs which means we, if we press any LED then it will bring us to that event then and if we press start button it will bring us to the game on and game on event will then bring us again to the event structure that will bring us to the LEDs and LED state function will bring us to that specific point. So now we will just start our working and let's see how it works. So let's just place some boolean and let's just place those booleans and align them. So that's how we can create four booleans and then we can just place on our front panel where we can uh, just see them uh, properly then we will start placing our three uh, buttons one is start button and the second one is stop button uh, sorry and the second one is our instructions button and we can place it like this and then we can align it and remove its label and change its name and then the third one is our stop button so that's how we create our front panel basically right now I'm not going to save the data since I have made many videos on it so I will just please make the functions so that the our state machine example will be clearly visible to us that how it will work so now I have placed the score indicator and I will resize its font and so that it is more visible, clearly visible to us. So now I will just go into the block or diagram and see there are three buttons, four LEDs. Now we will align them so that they will be look more proper and we will change them to control since we are pressing the leds so they will act as a control and these are the three buttons we can just replace their name so that they will be more and uh, they will give more appropriate meanings to us so now i will just begin with some enum constant to define my states so i will edit their items so let's just go and edit its items and at the first item let's say we are ending our game with the game end and before that it is an exit and then we have a structure which will bring us to the LED that will check if we have pressed the right LED or not and then it will be our game on and before that we have events case and and before that we have initialization so we made it in opposite direction so let's just start with the while loop and place 
a case structure inside of the while loop. Now if we connect our enum with our case structure, all the cases will be may, uh, will automatically be generated. So now we will place our cases inside of the case structure that will show us that which case should be triggered uh, when the specific event happens. So first of first case is our initialization that will bring us to the events case through the shift register and then if we move on to the next step we have events case so within the events case we will place the event structures that will trigger our event structure whenever a button is pressed or a boolean is pressed so within the within the event structure we will place our cases that if the specific event occurs then what case structure should be triggered so I will connect the output with my shift registers and our first event structure is timeout it means that if we do not press an LED then it should go timeout then it means that will bring us to the game end so how we can create the timeout function so for that purpose we need to set some point uh, some set some time that how much time it takes to just time out so for that purpose let's say i am considering some uh, 7000 millisecond which means 7 seconds it means if we do not press an led for 7 seconds then our program will go stop and the game will be ended so it depends upon the start button it means that if we press the start button then this countdown will be started if we are not even started our game then this countdown will not be applied to the timeout event so for that purpose I will just create so right now I uh, the next thing I am doing is if we have started the game right now then it should uh, speed up our game which means um, the minus one here shows that uh, our game if our game is not started yet then the event structure will have minus one uh, value which means it will never go stop since minus one means uh, forever delay so so in the case if we have pressed the start button then our delay will be started to seven seconds which means it will wait for seven seconds and if we have not pressed our start button then it will wait forever to speed up our game with the progress i have just uh, subtracted 25 from uh, 7 seconds so that every time it will pass through uh, the it will uh, we press a correct LED then it will just subtract 25 milliseconds from 7 seconds so now I will more uh, do more things with our program and place a case structure besides the uh, second structure which will show that if we have not pressed our if we have not pressed our start button if we have pressed our start button then the stop button and instruction button should go disabled as well as uh, grayed out which means that if we have not started yet then only those buttons will be visible if we have started the game then they will go disable and they will go gray out which will not show them that they are not pressable so that's how it will work so now we will create more event structures to show our other functions such as if we press our instruction button then this event structure will be triggered so for that event structure we will we will pass the data to uh, we will trigger it will trigger the data to our initialization again 
which means that the initialization case will be triggered to and the process within the events structure will be it will display us a message and what message will be displayed here is the instructions that we are doing <clears throat> so to place the instructions we will just um, concatenate the strings at the first line we have hello and welcome everyone and in the second um, we have um, end of line constant and similarly at the third node we have press correct led and whatever you want to write here to give the instructions who will play this game and <clears throat> similarly you can just add any word you want like i'm writing here that we can just set those leds to our uh, keyboard buttons you like writing here and then at the fourth position at the fourth node i can again add my uh, end of line constant and at the fifth node i can just add any other words what i want so i will connect the output to our message so that whenever our instructions button is pressed this event structure will be triggered and that will bring us to initialization again so now our third uh, case will be our start button which means that if we press our start button then it will bring us to this event structure and it will bring us to the game on case structure so so if if we press our start button then it should bring us to the game on and these are the other cases that we are and that we are going to use so in game on case structure we will place uh, we will use our random number generator so that we have four leds so we will use four random number from zero to three so that every time we press a correct led then randomly within those four leds one should go turn on and other should be turned off so here we will create a condition that if a specific random number is uh, created like from 0 to 3 then then the specific led should turn on from 0 to 3 which means which represents our four leds basically so that's how we will create the conditions and since it is our third case so it will present that our fourth LED is on we can similarly create the other functions the other conditions and connect with the local variables and similarly we will set out the other conditions so that they will be properly executed and now this uh, this um, random number generator will generate a random LED will turn on random LED whenever our correct LED is pressed so that will bring us to event structures again to wait if we press an LED or timeout event occurs or we press a wrong LED so again in the event structure if we come back here we have to check if our correct LED is pressed or not so for that purpose we have to first we have to create that what LED is pressed we must have to uh, tell our program that which LED is pressed so that that particular LED will be checked and the LED case structure so I have generated a boolean um, boolean event structure in which I will just build up an array and connect our all the outputs and connect it with my with some insert array function 
like this so that its index will be zero and its uh, element is true it means that whenever this uh, first led is pressed then it indicates that the index is zero and its condition is true that particular thing will trigger to that um, to trigger to the LED's case structure that will show us that this LED is right now is being pressed so now I will create an other event structure which will be which will represent our second LED and its index will be 1 and similarly we can create our for our third LED and our fourth LED and similarly we can just set their index like our second and for the third LED we have for the fourth LED we have the index 3 So now we can add an other event that will be our stop button so that all the conditions will be fulfilled. Since we have 4 LEDs and 3 buttons, so the total are 7. So we have created 7 events, oh sorry, uh, we have created 8 event structures in which 7 are dependent of our boolean uh, LEDs and 3 buttons. And the eighth one is our timeout event. So there are total eight event structures and which are depends upon uh, the buttons and the LEDs and the timeout condition. And in each LED event structure, we will give our case structure so that it will bring us to LED case structure that will check if our condition is uh, if our condition is right or not if it is compared and if it checks that the right LED is being clicked then it will bring us to uh, event structures again otherwise that will uh, that should bring us to the game end so in here we will check if the right uh, LED is being pressed or not so right now I will just create an index array function and I will connect it with is equals to function so that it will uh, it will check that we are working properly or not. So each event structure boolean like boolean 1, boolean 2, boolean 3 and boolean 4 will be connected to our the output of the insert array function will be connected to our loop end so that each time we press that should bring us that will bring the value to our uh, to the left side of while loop that will come up as an input using some shift register function and now in the and now in the LED function now we can just have our input that which LED is being pressed so we can use that as an input of our index function that will check which LED basically is pressed which event is being triggered so to define the index in here we need to check which index is being used we have to define the index in here so that it can check properly that what uh, is um, that which LED is pressed at the moment so to check the index uh, that which LED is turned on and if we have pressed that correctly or not we will use 
our output of the random number generator so we have connected the output of the random number generator with our loop that will act as as the input on the other side of the shift register and we will connect it with our index array function <clears throat> so now if the random number generator is generated then it will bring us as an index of our index function and the correct uh, LED if it matches with the correct LED condition that we have pressed then it will bring us to the game on and otherwise it if it is the if it does, the condition does not match then it will bring us to the game and condition so now we have to pre express our score it means that every time if we press a correct led then our sh score should increase so our output of the comparison function equals to will be connected to a case selector and every time we press a correct led then one score should be added to our total score so i will connect the output like this and i can just connect the output of our score to my while loop so that it will go in a loop with some shift register and every time we run the program it should start from zero so that it will initialize itself reset itself to zero so i have connected the fall condition with the previous value it means that every time we press the right led then it should go from then it should go and add plus one otherwise that will pass uh, with the same value so now we will connect all our wires in the other structures directly in which we are not implementing any functions so it is almost completed and now we will check what other things are remaining now we will add the our outputs that are not used in the other uh, case structures so for that purpose we will just add the our other functions in here i have connected this to the loop to give it a reference it is used as a reference our leds uh, build array function is used for the reference in our loop so now we will just go on to exit condition now we will wait for our exit condition right now it is not it will not be used at any point so we do not need to connect it anywhere right now i hope it will work properly so we will just go to now again we need to connect these wires so that in the case that these are not being used so that these data will be passed without implementing anything without changing anything so the outputs will be passed throughout since our initial value is the initialization case so we can just connect it to our initialization case in the case of exit and similarly we can just connect the other wires to our shift registers so that the other function other cases in which we are not implementing anything then these data will be passed without any changes 
so now in game end uh, case structure we have to create another dialog box which will show us that our game is ended and our and show us our final uh, score so that's how we will create our another display message and here again we will concatenate the strings in which we will show that the game is ended and it will show us our final score and in the similar way we can just create uh, the message that the game is over and your score is right now i can add my score from the output uh, of the numeric function is converted into a string and then it is connected with our message and in this condition that will bring us to exit function if i create a constant that will bring us to the exit case structure and all the other outputs will be again connected to our shift register so that they do not have an empty terminals so these will be connected so that every time the data will be passed without any changes and now in the final stage we will just give our final loop condition as true in our exit case which means that whenever the exit case structure will be triggered then our loop will go stop and in the all the other cases it should be false condition which means that whenever only the exit case structure will be triggered then only true value will be passed so now we will just run our program and let's see if it works properly so our instruction button is work properly if we press start then it is working properly and now if we do not press any led let's check if our timeout works properly so yes our timeout works also properly we can run our game and it is working properly since we have uh, pressed the wrong led then it shows us that these the two leds are turned on which displays us that we are uh, that we, it should bring us to that all the values should be bring to constant false that will show us that all the booleans should be turned off when we press the wrong LED so let's just play the game again let's just create a reference of false local variable so that every time we run the program then it should uh, start uh, from the initial conditions so that we can just create the local variables uh, so that the every time we will run the program they will start from the beginning so now if i run the program all the conditions start from the very initial conditions that we want to start so we can also implement our make the initial values default or like something so that every time but we can also go with the um, local variables still i see if uh, we press the wrong led the our two leds are turned on and it shows that our game is end we can remove this error or we can just implement another function in our game and condition that so right now the two leds are turned on still so we must have to retain those values to zero 
so that every time we will just begin our program then this value should be turned off so that's how if we run the program right now we can just see if we press any wrong LED then all the LEDs turned off and a dialog box appears that your game is over so now it is working fine to me and now we can just make them dependent on the keyboard buttons like we can make key navigation and set our uh, first boolean to f1 button and we can set their appearances such as on the uh, off text we can set f1 and we can remove on text but you can do otherwise like on the on condition you can just write f1 and at the off condition you can just write um, you can just remove the text on the off condition but here I am doing the opposite way so you can just change it yourself since you can right now see that how it works so that's how we will just create our oops we have to change its color so that it is more visible and now we can set our last LED to F4 button and show its text and change its off text to F4 and change its color to white and press OK so now if I run my uh, and run and start my game now I am using my keyboard buttons F1, F2, F3 and F4 to play this game so I hope you have like my work and like my effort